she ended. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, race fans, human beings, and others. It is episode, Gary, you said number 69 of Waved Yellow. Yeah. I've thought, contrary to your beliefs, Gary, I have a clean mind, clean thoughts. I am healthy. I'm calling it Ford again, three weeks in a row. So you'll notice. 69 Ford. Gary, Ford cheated at Lamar when they brought their LM GTE Pro that new fancy thing okay they cheated on their 50th anniversary to like oh my god we PR geniuses and <laughs> they won it it wasn't the 69 that won but um, that's what I'm sticking to okay and I'm going with it and you know why it was called a GT40 Gary why because it was 40 inches from the ground exactly the top of the car or the bottom of the car Fuck. <laughs> 40 <laughs> inches is a long way to go in your dreams, Chief. Careful, careful, just how the jingle bell comes out again. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. It's a family show. Welcome. We have um, some prettiness on the show, and there's a, pr uh, a damn good reason for that. Tasman uh, Pepper, welcome. Thank you for spending some time with us and for putting up with the technical glitch. <laughs> no, thank you for having me. I'm super stoked to be on the show. And yeah, let's have a good chat. Let's have a chat. I'll if tell I, you if what. I, if I may. We've seen nervousness. Okay. Get, if, if I may, if I may, just, uh, just for my, just to everybody out there, one of the reasons this is not live is that Vodacom sucks. The, the beautiful world of, of social media and everything else like that has suddenly decided to say you cannot go live. Basically, Gary, they gave you the finger. They yeah. said you've got one Ma chance, and yeah. you uh, said no. Uh, I've children, got <laughs> children are watching it, and there's a lady sitting with are us. They, so are they yourself. really children? Yes. No, do There's you? always children. Most children have Facebook. Yeah. So here we are. What happened last weekend, Gary? What did you watch? Uh, I went to a racetrack. We won't go there. And we went to Sword Corps on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, and you saw and, and saw Hack went out and put it Pro Am well, well, he Middle won East the, champion. He won the Pro Am in Middle East Championship, and rumor has it in a Porsche Cup car, a Hitler wagon. Uh, Rumor has a it, porca. a porker, that Saul is um, building a, um, or has ordered, and it is in production, a 1919 spec GT3 Porsche. Saul, I challenge you, paint it pink with the porker, you know what, what it means, paint it pink and, and come and race it. So Gary, this is one of the rub-offs of having an international GT3 race, and we're going to get you a little bit, just like, like chill and... This is like the part where you learn to relax. You, and you cannot keep on chipping at the wood all day. Uh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've, we've had a few nervous guests um, with us. Tasman ranks up there on probably the top step, but that's also okay because she takes her racing very, very, very seriously. We've had a bit of a chat. Now, we're going to get to you. So, <laughs> so Saul... International GT3 racing comes to South oh. Africa, Intercontinental. Yes. And Saul Hack, he's not short of connections because no. I believe there's a serious connection into Mr. Fenter and there's a serious connection Correct. into a whole lot of Euros. So therefore, GT3 Porsche can happen. This is what happens when you have an international race in your country. I think it's effing marvelous. Gary, the other sad thing was that um, Carl Busch won. Is that sad? Yeah, because, oh, your man didn't because my man Kevin Harvick didn't win in uh -huh. NASCAR. For those of you who are NASCAR nuts, if you're not a NASCAR nut, look it up. It's really great. The cars are cool. Um, and there's very interesting things. You know, they talk about miles an hour, and they mm. do 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour is 320 freaking kilometers an hour. Say That's that, that again. Fast. 320 kilometers an hour. Yeah, yeah but you've got to drop those things Gary, in I between. I said freaking, freaking's okay. Um, that was that. We were at Swart Corps. Motor, local motor racing is super healthy. We met the f uh, a, a journalist from Franschhoek. I nearly hey, said something. McKelly. We had an interesting discussion. It's great to deal with a mafia again. Nice to see McKelly at a racetrack and not just writing reports from uh, press releases and from race <laughs> results. Mean copy and paste. Yeah, control, alt, <laughs> copy. That's McKelly. McKelly, we love you. 
We know that you, your heart is in the right place in you your know chest. It, you know if it, it wasn't, I will rip it out and... You know where he is at the moment. He's partying in Sun City with some... Gary, frankly, I don't... Don't say it. Okay, okay moves on. <laughs> did you, did you by any chance, get to watch the MotoGP and uh, I was Moto really disappointed in Binder Little because Binder Little fell Darren, again. Darren Binder, and then he, I was also disappointed with... Binder Big because Binder Big chose the wrong tyres and went backwards, but at least he finished as a top KDM. Mm-hmm. And then I watched a chess match of note. Dovi is brilliant. Yeah. He backed them. Sh- and he said that word again. He backed them up mm-hmm. and he drove the race. Jimmy, was it Jimmy Clark or Jackie Stewart? I don't Both Scots people, one. multiple world. Well, not multiple, but one was. The other one was deadera and <laughs> trees don't work. <laughs> so, um, Jackie Stewart, he said that uh, amongst the many, many things that he said was, one, you need to drive around and imagine you've got a saucer of milk on your dashboard mm-hmm. and not spill it because you know what milk smells like in your car. It's like froth. Um, and the other one is win a race at the slowest possible speed. And that's what Dovi did. Yeah. Awesome. And, and who finished fourth? Gotcha. So My man. Fourth. Who? He came fourth Cross on his flag. Yamaha. Oh, okay. Moses. The oldest guy in the field. Okay. My grandpa. Okay. Valley. The Valley. Boy. Hey, Valley. And where's Valley's teammate? Behind him. We're there with Norman Noe. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love it. So, what, what is that? Did you watch it? I did, but I kind of fell asleep. <laughs> so you fell asleep? Yeah, I fell asleep. I'm up very early, so I need to get my... You're up early because you're training? Exactly. Why are you training? I'm training for the W Series. <laughs> this W Series is awesome stuff. You know, I, I was a non-believer in the beginning because I think that motor racing is the one sport that women can do on an equal footing to men, but I believe that it... I've, I'm, I've changed my mind. I was wrong. I I've changed my mind, and I think that it's a cool thing to highlight chicks can drive. Yeah, I think everyone had their, their obligations against W Series. I think when I first heard about it, I also s- kind of s- took a step back as well. But when you look at what they're doing, um, they're opening doors for female in motorsports to gain the right experience and the right exposure and to learn on an international field. And um, I think they're opening a lot more doors for female in motorsports. But it's, it's, not just, it's not just about um, pick some... I've got to watch my language here. Pick some girl, ladies, women. Wh- what are... Woman, let's go with woman because it's W series, eh? So pick some women, stick them in cars, and oh my god, let's have some makeup and everything's pink. And it's not, you guys are serious racers. Yeah, I mean, we've shown that we are serious racers, we've been competing against guys our entire lives. I mean, this is the first time they're splitting women up from guys, and it's not because they're splitting us up, they're just giving they're trying to create an equal platform to, for us to learn and for us to gain the right uh, experience. And, and putting a spotlight on, on yes, the women right. Yes, creating, I mean, just showing uh, that girls are capable, more than capable of doing the exact same job as a guy is. I mean, everyone always has their doubts, and women aren't given those opportunities like guys are given, even if they are more than capable of doing it. Um, so this is just creating a platform that's saying, okay, listen, these girls are serious and they are here to put on a show and they are here to gain those seats where we haven't ever been given before. Now, you, you grew up with a famous father in Pepperoni. Who is probably one of the hardest, fastest, meanest, toughest, nicest guys around. Yes. What was that like? Um, we had the biggest support from my dad. Um, obviously, I grew up at the racetrack. I was there from two weeks old because he was still racing. And so I, I spent every single day with my dad. Um, we did everything together. And when I was old enough and wanted a go-kart, my dad put everything forward and bought me one and spent every single weekend at the track with me you know teaching me helping me 
and slowly when he started saying that I was serious about it we obviously started putting in more effort I mean we did more miles around this countryside than <laughs> I don't think is normal for any normal what, family just but <laughs> what is what is being serious about um, driving a cart well, you got to put in the laps, you got to put in the effort, you got to be at the racetrack every weekend. And, and what about school? Ah, uh, school was one of those other things <laughs> that you want to do. <laughs> so but school was a distraction yeah, school for you getting into a race car. Exactly. But my dad made us go to school and we still needed to get our qualifications and we still had to become somewhat smart. <laughs> um, so we had to still do well in school and that was like, that was our... I don't know how to say it. Um, That's your fallback um, position. Yeah, that I mean, at least you yeah, you made it through matric. Yes, I made it through matric. Just, but I made it, <laughs> and I got a degree after that. So. And, and degree in what? I got a degree in interior architecture. What is that all about? I mean, it's, it's it, you got interior design and then architecture. Uh, interior design is more well, interior decorating is more just decorating a house, choosing colors, choosing fabrics all of that stuff where interior architecture is more looking at the shell of a interior a building and building from the inside so, so you can do like um, drywall bulkheads and exactly. design you, all that sort of stuff you basically do the ins and you get given an, uh, an empty shell and you've got to fill it why that um that's far from racing course. i know very very far i enjoyed design in school i actually took a gap year after school to see what i'd I'd prefer to do before I went into studying. So I worked with my dad for a year. Um, I wasn't just allowed to chill on the couch and do nothing. And um, I then decided to go into that. I just, I, I love design, I love practical stuff. Um, I'm not very book orientated and book smart. Um, but when it comes to practical stuff, uh, working with my hands and being creative, um, that's what I prefer to. So you can do the, the CAD design and yes, all exactly. that sort of stuff. Exactly. But I mean, you kids, kids these days, they grow up so smart with, <laughs> with, with, with computers. But you're a racing driver primarily. Yes. And W Series beckons you off Wednesday, is it? Tuesday, I leave. Tuesday. Yeah. And so you're going to? Uh, Almira, Spain. Can so you hablo <laughs> español yet? <laughs> no, <laughs> I haven't learned uh, Spanish, but yeah, I'm going there to drive a car and hopefully drive the car very, very fast. So this is the shootout to get to the last 18 or 20 yes. women in W Series. And there's one and a half million dollars in prize funds. The winner gets half a million dollars. What is it going to take for you to get there, get into this, get chosen from 28 to 18? There's 10 girls, you're going to be disappointed. Um, you know, it's, it's actually all these girls are really, really competitive and they're really fast. Um, a lot of them have driven single seaters before. So the background is very similar to what I am. Um, the last time I drove Formula cars was six years ago. <laughs> um, but, I mean, everyone, we on an even playing field going into it. And no one knows the track. No one knows any of that stuff. Um, and no one knows the car? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, a lot of the girls have been testing Formula 3s in Europe and in America. Um, one of the girls actually has been racing Formula 3s. Um, so I think maybe they have a slight upper hand when it comes to the actual racing car that we're going to be driving. But I have experience in Formula cars before. I mean, you've you've won a lot of races in Formula Volkswagen, which are probably uh, Formula Three in a bit, like a, a, a little bit of a step um, before Formula Three. And you've you've yeah. spent three, four years in that. Yeah, I spent four years racing Formula Volkswagen, and also raced Formula BMW for one year. Um, so I did learn quite a lot in that series. Um, we obviously don't have as much downforce as the Formula 3 actually offers. Um, speed wise, I don't think the Formula Volkswagen is too far off. Uh, so at least there's that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just adapting to the race car as best as possible. How comfortable do you feel with the downforce in the car? Have you got that ability to trust when you go into a corner and your brain is actually yeah, saying to you, hey, this thing's car. gonna chuck it off the end. <laughs> and you take that breath and and you and it sticks 
Yeah, I think you have to just have trust in the car and the capabilities of what the car has to offer. Um, it comes through a lot of the feedback through the steering wheel and through your bum. I mean, you dri that's how you drive a race car. So I think it's coming to grips with that. Uh, obviously, I haven't had, I haven't experienced such drastic downforce cars. So it's a big, it's, it's a, a big jump. Yeah, you. Hold it on. is. So you're going into, <laughs> you're going into new car for you, complete new territory. New country. You've been to Spain before? I have been to Spain to watch my brother. Okay. So yeah, but that's watching. That's yeah, a spectator. I've never raced so there. you're going to Spain to to race a car to to test. Yeah. You're going to probably one of the the most important exams of your life. Yeah. They, you're going to be looked at and prodded and inspected and you, your fitness, your mental ability, your physical ability, and your driving ability. It's got to be daunting. Yeah, I mean, W Series is taking this really seriously. Um, they're not just looking at how we are able to drive a car. They're looking at your fitness levels, your exactly like you said, with your, your mind and all of that stuff. And um, they're focusing a lot on it. And from the first round, we obviously learned sort of what they were looking for. And obviously, they've given us feedback, and it's to help us progress. So um, the feedback what, from what the first... What the feedback they gave you? Um, it was actually really positive. Uh, so, but there's obviously there's obviously things you need to work on. So I needed to work on a little bit more of my fitness, which I've been training really hard for. And that's why we're at Smart Corps <laughs> Raceway. It's Wednesday yeah. afternoon. There's a car track right behind us. You spent the afternoon getting fit in a cart or yes. using the cart to get a bit of fitness. Yeah. So when I got back from um, Austria and I made it into W Series. I knew I knew I had to get back in a cart because there's nothing like a cart fitness. Violent. I mean, I don't have the, the opportunity to drive F3s here. Mm. Um, we don't have those cars in South Africa. So for me to get into a go-kart and it's really, really physical and it works your neck and it works your arms. And to me, that was another way just to prepare. Um, obviously we can't drive all the time on the main circuits, but at least I could drive in the, on the cart and get used to that like it's really really fast paced so getting your mind around that and getting your mind around a real wheel drive again because obviously I've been racing front wheel drives <laughs> for the last six years so the front wheel drives for the last six, six years has yeah. been the Falcon Formula yeah. VW Polo Cup yeah. and but from a that's got to be good from a race craft point of view not just about from driving a car there's you can handle a car but your race craft is You've been pretty damn sharp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Polo Cup is obviously, it's taught me a lot. Um, I came from the single seaters, so I came from a rear wheel drive and obviously a really good handling car. And uh, Polo Cup has been very, very good for me. It's taught me a lot of race craft. It's really, really competitive. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't say it's it, it definitely hasn't been a waste. <laughs> and who would have thought that a front wheel drive car could oversteer as much as I they know, do? No, it's it's hectic, and the, the racing is really really tight. I mean, the competition is always good, so you always have to be on top of your game. And so yeah, last year I came runner up in the series and um, fighting for the championship still to the last round. Um, so it taught me a lot and now I have this new opportunity so I'm going like all for it you know I'm putting in as much effort as possible I missed the first round of Polo Cup at the beginning of the year all because I'm trying to prepare for W Series that's commitment and you know a lot of the males have um, I suppose commented about women not making it because they're not really committed but you sound like you've ditched boyfriends because <laughs> of racing. Yeah, I've only got time to sleep, train, work, train and sleep again. <laughs> that's Repeat. Pretty, yeah, that's literally my life at the moment. Since I've got back from Austria, I know I had to put in a lot more effort. Um, and like I, I've just put in everything to try and get into W Series. I mean, it would mean a lot for me to get back into the international scene. And it, it's, it's just a great opportunity, I mean, to get over there and, if possible, to get recognized and picked up into something further, you know. Because you've driven um, Formula BMW in, in the East and you've tested for Kessel Ferrari. Yes. What is that like? A, driving a Ferrari and B, a GD3 car? Yeah, well, that, that, was, uh, yo, that was an experience and a half. I mean, uh, I went from the front wheel drive Polo, which doesn't really have a lot of horsepower. <laughs> and... Um, I went to go test the, the Ferrari GT3 in, it was Italy, 
and so I had to learn another new track, a new car completely. It's obviously do a you lot bigger. Do you enjoy learning the, the track? Yeah, I think, you know, growing up in karting, we had to learn tracks really fast. What are the things... Sorry, we, you, you, you mentioned learning a track. It's your fault, not mine. And mom, I've got like... So when you get to a new track, what are the bits that you you concentrate on learning? How do you learn a new track? A new track? Well, you, uh, before you get there, you obviously try and watch videos on the track just to get the gist of where the track goes. Um, you get track maps and you also get more information from data and all, uh, all of the technical glitches that you get at a racetrack. So you obviously you learn your gears and you learn you know, like what corners, what corner and what uh, gears go where. And when Do you, you sim it at all? Pardon? Do you use sim racing at all? Um, I don't have a sim here, so no, I don't do that. <laughs> hey, Ian, a sim is needed. Sim? <laughs> no, so you learn track maps, and when you get there, you actually walk the track. Um, it's probably the the easiest way to learn a track because. So talk to kids who, um, kids, um, people going to a new track. When you walk a track, what are you looking for? You're looking for bumps into a corner, you're looking at braking zones, you're looking at corner entry points and exit points and what's on the outside of the corner, what's on the inside of a corner because obviously if curbs are different from one corner to the next corner you have to know about that and whether you can use them or you can't use them. Uh, faster corners, how to take a faster sweep. When So you normally walk it with someone who knows the track a, l a lot better than you do so that they can sort of give you inside information about it and then when you get in the car you've got a, cu a couple of laps to learn the track and you've got to be on it from you're where you're it. <laughs> yeah that's that's basically it so as you go you're obviously learning more and more and more and testing the barriers more and more and more but you have to be able to get into a car e even if it's a new car and learn the track as fast as possible so that you can find time as quick as possible. So GD3 Ferrari, 550 horsepower, reasonable amount of downforce, 1200 kilograms. Uh, was it an okay car? It was a really nice car to drive. Um, and it sounds cool? Yeah, it, so it was like, it was a lot faster than what I anticipated, to be honest. When I first pulled out the pits, I was like, whoa, okay, this thing's got some horsepower. Um, the downforce is really good. Overall, the car handles really, really nicely. I mean, it's very, very balanced. And from what my brothers told me with the GT3s, some cars aren't, you know. Some cars are a lot more tail happy or some cars have a lot more understeer, where the Ferrari is actually really, really balanced. Um, so that was an experience and a half. And the first day, I actually got up to speed quite nicely. Um, but then the, the next day, it was just rain. So <laughs> I had to learn how to drive the car in the rain and um, obviously not trying to push too hard because I didn't want to make you don't want to check it off yeah I don't <laughs> want to make mistakes and, the, and we also got told in the beginning of the day like just don't overdo it because the car is leaving the next day to go to the race in Abu Dhabi so <laughs> you also have this in the back of your mind all the time and um, we knew that all four drivers were going to go to Abu Dhabi if I got the right categorization from FIA. And you didn't? No, I didn't. They so gave you're too good. <laughs> you're they a gave, silver. Yeah, they gave me a silver and I needed to be a bronze. And that would have given so me a bronze. So just to, for, uh, you've got gold, platinum, gold, silver, bronze. Yeah. And bronzes are quick bronzes. They're this, the least experienced, let's put it this way. The FIA sort of categorizes them as like, Maybe the slowerest, and yeah, the the least experienced. But if you're a quick bronze, you are seriously oh, you valuable. A, yeah, you have a lot more opportunities to drive because they always need a bronze driver. Or um, if you can't really have more than two silvers in a car, you know. So it was a bummer because I wasn't able to get that seat, and it would have been good for me if I got a few more extra laps in the Ferrari just to come to more gr like get grips with it, but. You know, it was an experience and a half. I mean, who gets to drive a Ferrari GT3? <laughs> but who gets to drive a Formula 3 in W Series? I think it's absolutely magnificent. And just for... I've got a production prepared some notes for me, as they always do, but they screwed up with a font, so I can hardly read it. They've got... These are the list of 
countries, Hungary, Finland, Poland, there's a thing I can't read here, USA, UK, China, Canada, Spain, uh, Belgium, Japan, and Italy, and my favorite, Liechtenstein, <laughs> and then <laughs> Australia, and this one here, can you read that? No, I can't. Like production, excuse me, <laughs> can you get your, your shit, I mean your stuff sorted. So there's, Gary, um, you just want to kill shit, I mean kill stuff because it's light and we're having fun. Right, so where are we, I just want to say thank you very much for taking time out of your, we know you're busy, you got a hectic thing, you're leaving Tuesday, we wish you bon voyage. You. And go and do, deliver you the best that you are. Be, do good shit yeah. and make it happen and come out of there just knowing that you laid it all on the table yeah that's what I'm going in uh, I'm going in there and giving it the best that I can um, obviously I don't know what's possible or what's going to come out of it but I've certainly I've certainly tried my best leading up to this point and prepared as best as I can and so I can only give it my all in the race car and just hope that it's good enough to make it into the top 18. <laughs> It's all we can expect from somebody, give it all you can. Gary, we're going to Cape Town. Yeah. Um, Am sorry I to interrupt I, I've that, packed no, my no. tent. I don't know where I'm staying. Apparently, there's a place, but I've packed my tent. Yeah, and you're going by Pelican Airways. I'm going, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Gary, if they put me on that 737 Max it's 8. It's been grounded. Well, has it? Yeah. Because BA couldn't give a flying fa. No, 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 but yes. To all of you I'm not there. going yeah. BA, by the way. I'm going like, who's that one that's supposed to be on time all the time? Kukukula. No, <laughs> no. They like Fla Uslerus. Fla Safi. Fla Safi, yeah. Apparently. Yeah. So Safi, yeah. if you're not on time. I'm yeah. Just so that everybody else out there knows, we will be live for the... Uh, for As opposed to this recorded thing, because yeah. the network sucks. Yeah. So we will be live from uh, the Campus 600 live in Cape Town from... Uh, Three o'clock on Saturday afternoon onwards. Four hours of awesome racing. Gary, why is it called a 600 if it's four hours? Uh, that's the number of yeah, laps they will do. Yeah. Or the number of kilometers that they expect to do in four hours. I knew the answer before I asked the question. So the I have lawyers in my family. <laughs> and they said to me, never ever ask a question that you don't know the answer to. So then why ask the question? Why don't you just answer it straight up? Because I don't want to pretend that I know everything. Because that, yeah. But it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, just for those out Who's going to win it? Uh, uh, me. Us. We're going to win. You know why? Because <laughs> I've got a new headset coming. Yeah, and we live, so we're going to get to the finish line before the first competitor will. So that's one of the cool things. But not Technology, only guys. Live streaming. Yeah. Live streaming. Log yeah. on to Facebook and you, uh, I -L -L -E, or wherever it goes, Gary will tell you where it is. For the second time ever in the history of racing in this country, we, Gary. Grumpy is bringing you, it's like he's grafted hard at this, and the oak is, he's like in a flat panic that it, which he does get as the deadlines draw near. It's live streaming of endurance racing in South Africa. It is absolutely awesome. Well done, Gary. I'm proud Thank to you. be associated with you, and I'm so happy that you let me in on this gig of yours. Well, I'm going to say thank you to you, and I'm, Tasman, I'm going to say thank you to you, because it's, it's competitors like you that keep us guys that do the crazy things, hungry for the news that actually tells the world a story about South African motorsports people. So go out there, have an absolute joy. Yes. And we need to have fun. And if you <laughs> if if you get to where you want to go, I promise you we'll have a microphone with you. In fact, we'll have a microphone with you irrespective of what happens. Thank you very much. And thank you to thank everyone you for, for all the support. Um yeah. Um hopefully I'm not gonna let South Africa down. But No, don't worry about <laughs> us. Just you go and do your best. And if you can walk, get back on that aeroplane and you say, well, I laid it all out, no matter what happens, yeah. that's all that counts. 100%. So I'm going there to give it my all and hopefully come back with a seat in W Series. Yeah, we hope you do. Right, that's it. Our production leader, our technical director, our chief cameraman, our lighting crew, the main man what counts, the guy who runs there, Gary. We will be back next week for episode this is 70. It's almost as old as Gary. So it'll be episode 70 of Wave Yellow. But watch out for Friday, Cape Town. We're coming for you. Keep your mountain strapped down. Keep your coffee going and the Vespers in the garage. We're on our way. Thanks a lot for watching. Have an awesome day. Cheers.